All right, well, hey, happy Friday, everybody. Uh, today's plan, we're gonna go ahead and keep talking about using series for solutions. So uh, I showed you an example last time. I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that we can sort of expedite the process so that we can actually find the relationships between um, the coefficients, these A's that we're looking for, because often what you get is uh, what we call a recursion relationship where future A's are dependent upon previous A's, right? And so um, <clears throat> that can definitely speed it up. So I'm gonna show you some tricks um, that you can pull to kind of help you find the solutions faster. Um, anyway, so that, that's my plan. But before we go there, you guys have any homework questions or questions about other stuff we talked about so far? or you just wanna dive in and get to the series stuff because you love it so much. All right, well, I'm, I'm not seeing or hearing anything. So um, let's go ahead and just kind of jump back in. And I'm actually gonna go back to the one that we were doing. Um, so this is the one that we did last time, the exact same series. Um, and we're not going to like redo everything, but we are going to kind of uh, at least get it to the point where I can start showing you um, some of the shortcuts. So we were looking at solving this guy, right? We have y double prime plus xy prime plus y equals zero. And then we had some initial conditions here of y is of zero is zero and y prime of zero is equal to one. So just to remind you the idea, and this is how you're going to start every one of these problems, every single one of them, regardless of what the equation is and what the initial conditions are, you're gonna start with this guy. You're gonna go start with y equals the sum from zero to infinity of a sub n x to the n. Okay, because that's your generic power series. So you always start with that, which then since you always want derivatives, you're always gonna have these as well. Remember to kick up your start by one, but then you just differentiate the power of X like you normally would, right? So you bring it out front and decrease the exponent. So um, that's Y prime and then Y double prime is gonna be a start at two and times N minus one times A sub N X to the N minus two. So you're gonna get really used to this bit right here because you do it every single time, every single time. All right, so then what we did is we plugged it in. Um, so we took those forms and we actually put them in the differential equation and it gave us something that looked like this. All right, so, um, up to this point, everything looks exactly the same as what we did last time. But now let me show you how we can use algebra to help us find the relationship between those variables a little bit faster. So here's the first thing that's gonna be kind of useful. Like you may remember what we did at this point was we just started like writing out the first couple of terms and then we started grouping the terms together, which of course led to the question that Bradley asked of, well, how many terms do we need? How far do we go, right? Well, what we're gonna do is do this a little bit more generically, a little bit more um, just algebraically so that we can kind of get around that and we can be setting ourselves up for what we can do for as many terms as we want, okay? so. First thing you should probably do if you want to try to uh, tackle this um, algebraically, which I definitely suggest you do, is bring anything that's out front of the sums and multiply them in. And you can do that because if you think about what's really going on, if we've got a bunch of sums, this is distribution. We're distributing that X to each of the pieces in the sums, which then means we could condense the sums back down. So like in this case, this one's now gonna look like the sum from one to infinity of n, a sub n, x to the n, 
because that x times the x to the n minus one by using rules of exponents becomes x to the n. So that's the first thing that I always do if I'm gonna to try to do this algebraically is I'll just bring in anything from out front. Uh, it turns out in this case, there was only that one X, but suppose that there had been you know, a three Y double prime and an X squared Y or whatever it is. You can go ahead and just uh, bring those in. You can distribute them. Okay, now the other thing that's gonna be really useful is to combine all these sums into one, right? If possible, what I would really love is just to combine all the sums into one sum so that I can just go, hey, this is what those individual terms are gonna look like. Okay, now that can be done. <clears throat> you can definitely do that, but we have to do one thing before we do that. We need to make it so that all of the sums um, have x raised to the same power. Writing not as quickly as I was talking. Now make it so that the sums all have the same power of x. Now you'll notice that these last two are already, uh, they're already the same, right? They're both x to the n. So what I really want to turn this first guy from an x to the n minus two to an x to the n. All right, so how are we gonna do that? Well, it's actually not that difficult. It's not that difficult of a process. All we have to do is shift the index. So think about this. Right now, I've got x to the n minus 2. But what I want to do is I want to do a transformation. Right? I want to do transformation so that this becomes x to the n. So that means I need to shift it by 2. And if I do that, I actually want this thing to now start at zero. So that what I end up having is an x to the n. So I think it should be pretty clear why I want to shift two, right? Like you guys all see that, I hope. But what's not entirely clear is why we go from two down to zero as opposed to going from two up to four. Now, it, it really is just a transformation thing. And it's kind of the, you remember how transformations, horizontal transformations are the opposite of what you want to do, right? Adding actually moves you to the left, subtracting moves you to the right. That's exactly what just happened here. But to help you, let me just give you my tip for how I do this. I think about what exponent do I get if I plug in my starting number here? So if I take two and I plug that in here, I'm gonna get x to the zero. Well, if I want x to the n as my term, I need it to start with x to the zero. Oh, okay, so n is zero. So basically what we're doing here is we're just shifting everything by two. We're gonna increase everything with an N by two. So we gotta do that with all these other pieces as well. So we're gonna get N plus two. We're gonna get N plus one for our second multiple. And then we're gonna get A sub N plus two. Now, let me show you another way that you can do this, that there's some extra steps involved, but sometimes when you actually see these steps, it helps you a bit. So um, let me show you another little trick that you can do here. Do a substitution and say, what I really want is x to the u, let's say. So I'm gonna let u equal n minus two. 
So that means my sum now is going to be u equals something, and then everything else is going to be in terms of u. Well, I do need to replace the n's, so I can use this and solve for n. I get n is equal to u plus 2. So that'll turn this into u plus 2 times u plus 1, because that's u plus 2 minus 1, a sub u plus 2 x to the u. And then in terms of where it starts, if I take 2 and I plug it in there for n, 2 minus 2 equals 0. So you can see that these are exactly the same, just with u instead of n. So if that helps, totally go for it. Whatever you need to do to help you see um, shifting that index, do it. And this will work for however many terms we have, so long as we replace each n. Correct. Yep. So like it turned out in this case, we only had to do it for that one sum. But um, I mean, it, sometimes it turns out you have to do it for all of them but one. That's OK. So you just do each one. And um, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing about sums is that you can change that index starting point to whatever you want it to be. So you can make the forms inside look a little bit different. Um, but hopefully you're seeing why I wanted to do this. Because now if I put these guys together, all of the bits with the n's and the a sub n's and all that, those are multiples on my xn, which means I just get to add those all together and form my uh, sum. So let me actually do that for you here real quick so you can see what I mean. So now when I combine them, I'm going to get a sum. We'll worry about the indices and all that in a second, but we're going to get n plus 2 times n plus 1 times a sub n plus 2 plus n times a sub n plus a sub n times x to the n. And so this is the my multiple on x to the n. So it's kind of nice. Now I just, I've got my one sum and we're all good. But can you see an issue that we still have to resolve here when I combine them? Because there's definitely something that's a bit of an issue still. The starting, starting point. Yeah. So what starting point should I use? Zero or one? Yeah. So there's an issue. I mean, that's the issue. These starting points are not the same. And in order to really combine them, I do need them all to be the same. So here's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to have this start at one. But I'm going to add on some other pieces. Because if you think about this one, this one actually starts at 0, which means I need the 0 term. If I plug in 0, I'm going to get 2 times 1, which is 2, times a sub 2, times x to the 0, which is 1. So this guy right here, that 2a2, this is the n equals 0 from the first one. And what I'm going to do is the same thing over here, where I plug in 0. I'm going to get a sub 0 times x to the 0, so just a sub 0. And this guy is the n equals 0 from the third sum. So basically, I just took the first term out. I pulled it out of the sum. I left all the rest of them in there. And I just stripped it out. So what you have to do when you get to this point, 
Like if you look at this line where we are now ready to combine them all, look for which n is biggest. Look for the biggest n because that's the one that we're going to put down here as our start. And so if there are other terms before that, if these other n's are smaller, start plugging in n's until you get to the one that's going to be in common. Okay, so I know at this point you're probably thinking, uh, can we just go back to when we wrote out the first like five terms and combine them? Because this is a lot of extra work. But let me show you why we like this. Because now this is going to give us the recursion relationship between all of the different A's. So first, notice that these two here, the two A2 and A0, those are the only constant terms because everything else in here now is going to be powers of x. So we know that a0 plus 2a2 is equal to zero. <clears throat> and we saw that last time, right? We, we definitely knew that that was true. But now if you look at this guy, this now says n plus one times n plus two times a sub n plus two. Um, let me combine those into a plus n plus one a sub n. And so what I know is that this is going to have to equal zero always as well. So we're going to get n plus one times n plus two times, oh, yeah, no, I'm going to keep doing it down here, times a sub n plus two plus n plus one times a sub n equals zero. Um, I can actually divide everything by that n plus one, because you don't have to worry about that being zero, right? So gone, gone, that's still zero. And so the other thing that we see now is that we get n plus two times a sub n plus two plus a sub n equals zero. And that's the relationship for all of the n's going forward. And in fact, let me go ahead and solve this for a sub n plus two. So all of that work that we just did was actually kind of big because this is now the recursive relationship. And now that we have this, let me show you how fast it is to actually build our A's. So we already knew from before that A0 and A1 are going to be free choices. So we got A0 is A0. Then we get A1. So then A2, all right, well, A2 is going to be minus one half A0. A3, let's go to this recursive relationship. Now N is equal to one. So we're going to get minus one third A1. A4 is going to be minus one fourth A2. Well, we already knew what A2 was. So it's minus one half A0. So that's one eighth A0. All right, A5 minus one fifth A3. So minus one fifth times minus one third A1. which is 1 15th A1. And we can just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And if you actually notice what the pattern is, like for the evens, it was a half times a fourth times a sixth 
So the next one's going to be minus 148 a naught. This one times one minus one seventh, uh, negative one one oh fifths. And you can just keep going and building and building and building and building and building. So this is the power of doing the algebra first before trying to expand it out and all that. Um, yeah, it takes a little bit of work, but we just got the relationship that's going to be true for all of them, and um, we can easily build these guys. All right, so take that for what it is. It's just, it's another way to help you get there that you don't have to rely on writing out the first few terms. Um, you can actually just do the algebra on it. Um, and then, of course, when we built our answer, remember the answer was y equals a naught times y1 plus a1 times y2. And the a naught and the a1 were our initial conditions when we center it at that place, right? So this one just ended up being y equals y2. So it's all the ones with the a1s on it. Um, so that's going to be uh, x minus one third x cubed plus one fifth x to the fifth minus one seventh, or no, one fifth, one fifteenth x to the fifth minus one one oh fives, which is what the next one's going to be. x to the seventh dot dot dot. And if you wanted to add more terms, it's really easy. Next one, multiply by 1 ninth, then by minus 1 11th, then by minus 1 13th, and so on down the line. All right, so this is not a nice function. It is not any that you know, but that's the power series for the solution to this differential equation. All right, so let's do another one here. Let's kind of start from scratch. Um, and we'll try to do this process again. Because um, I think when you see it another time, it will make a little bit more sense. All right, so let me go ahead and clear this. But before I clear it real quick, any questions on this specific example? All right, so I'm going to clear it. You can always go back and watch the video and uh, catch it again if you missed any. All right, so let's try another one here. Let's look at this guy, x, y double prime plus 2y equals 0. So we'll do the same thing. We will try to find um, the two different functions, and we'll find the first few terms at least for each of them. But let's see if we can do this algebraically. Let's build our power series and, and all that. Um, but notice that this one, I didn't give you an initial condition. So that means that when we find this, we're still going to have a zeros and a ones. And I can actually have numbers for them. Um, and the other thing that does is that makes it so that we can actually center this wherever we want. All right, so how do we want to do that? Where do you want to center it? At zero, I guess. OK, you like that? Sound like a good plan? So uh, set it at zero? Yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. OK, um, I have a slight problem with that. If we divide by x off the y double prime, is that it, the problem? Yeah, let's think about putting this into the usual kind of form for our second order, where we would divide it by x. We get y double prime plus 2 over x times y equals 0, which means that p of x, or no, actually, sorry, that would be q of x. is 2 over x. And what we know in order for a solution to exist, 
Remember, we need P and Q to be continuous in the interval where we're looking. And so this is going to be a problem. X equals zero is going to be such that we can never create an interval around it where we're going to have a solution. So this guy's a problem. In fact, this point uh, x equals zero, uh, this is what we call a singular point. And singular points are problems when we do power series. We need to avoid singular points. So that means we need to center it somewhere else. And literally, we can center it anywhere else we want. One. All right. I, I think one's probably a good choice. In terms of where you're going to want to center it, like if you were doing this on your own, um, basically, you're going to go with the, well, how big of an interval do I want to be allowed? Because like if we center it at one, at best, we're going to be good from zero to two. Right, because we can only reach zero. So if we're cool with an interval that's just length zero to two, one is a perfect place to center it. But if that's not big enough, okay, we'll center it at 500. Then you're going to be good from zero to 1,000. Right? Or if you want to be on the negative side, center it at negative eight, and now you're going to be good from negative 16 to zero, or, you know. So in this sort of situation, when you do have the choice, um, it's really going to come down to how, what kind of an interval do you want to be able to use? And you're going to craft it thusly. Now, since this is purely just for practice, um, I'm going to go ahead and take Bradley's recommendation of centering it at one. Um, but again, totally up to you since we don't have an initial condition that's suggesting a center. So we're going to go ahead and center this. At x equal one. All right, now, if you do this, if you center it somewhere other than x, um, that means that what we start with with our y's is going to look slightly different. So it's still going to be a sum from zero to infinity, and we're still going to have our a sub n. But now, this is going to be x minus one to the n, because we're centering it at one. But what's really nice about the derivatives here, oops, second derivative, getting ahead of myself, is that we still do the same thing where we increase our count. We still bring the multiple out front. We still decrease the exponent by one. And we would need to do the chain rule. But of course, the derivative of x minus one is just one. So uh, when it comes down to it in terms of functionality, nothing is really different. You just have to put x minus c in all of the places. All right, so uh, singular points we got to watch out for. Um, oh, just by the way, if it's not a singular point, it's what we call an ordinary point. Excuse me. So like in this case, one is an ordinary point. So you can center at any ordinary point. You'll never have a problem. It's the singular points that we have to watch out for. And um, we'll, we'll talk more about what you do when you actually do have singular points, other than shifting yourself somewhere else. Because suppose our initial conditions were something with zeros, um, we still might want to try to do something with it, right? All right, well, now that we've got this, we're going to go ahead and plug them in to the equation like we've done every other time. So we're going to get x times the sum from 2 to infinity, n times n minus 1, a sub n, x minus 1 to the n minus 2, plus 2 times just the plain old y. So that's the good old starting one. And again, we want that to equal 0. 
All right, so uh, same goal as before, which is let's use the algebra to help us do this. Let's first bring things in. Okay, so that two is gonna come in. That's nice and easy. Zero to infinity. Two, a sub n times x minus one to the n. But this other one, there's a bit of an issue. Because when I bring that x in to multiply it, I can't actually combine that with the x minus 1. Because they're not the same base, right? Yeah, it's going to be a square now. Right? So it doesn't, it just, it doesn't work the way it did before because we had x times x to a power. So rules of exponents, everything's great. This one, we've got x and an x minus one. They're not the same bases. So we can't actually combine them. All right, so we have to pull a little bit of a trick here. And this is what we're gonna do. This x, we can really think of it as x minus one plus one. And so it's this that we're going to distribute. And why can we think of it that way? Because uh, it is x minus one plus one equals x. I mean, oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, but maybe the question really is why did I want an x minus one? But that is because I want to be able to lump it into this. So I want it to look identical. Um, so I basically just started with that and then thought, well, what do I have to add or subtract to make it be X? Uh, so what this does is it's actually going to make it so that we have two series. The one from the X minus one, we're going to get N times N minus one times A sub N times X minus one to the N minus one. I'm going to add one to that exponent. The other one is just going to be the same series as we started with. So this was times x minus 1, and this is times 1 but still being added together. All right, now th th this is definitely trickier and a lot of the time when you um, center it somewhere other than zero, you have to pull a little bit of an algebra trick like this. Um, but trust me, you still want to do that. So now let's adjust all of the exponents so that they're all n, right? We need to change this n minus two so that it's an n, and we need to change this n minus one so that it's also an n. So this guy means we need to shift by one. So we're gonna start with a sum of n equals one to infinity, and I have to add one to all of my n's here. So I'm gonna get n plus one, times n times a sub n plus one times x minus one to the n. All right, this next one, I need to shift by two. So shifting by two is gonna bring that down to zero. And then I just have to do n plus two for all these things. So I get n plus two times n plus one times a sub n plus two times x minus one to the n. And then my last term is actually perfect. Don't have to do anything to it. And again, that's all gonna equal zero.
All right, so we're actually at the same place where we were last time, where they don't all start at the same place. So when I do combine them, I'm going to want it to start at one. And what we're going to get is n times n plus is a sub n plus one plus n plus two times n plus one times a sub n plus two plus two a sub n's and that's all times x minus one to the n and then we have to actually add on the bits that we had from the zero terms so for the first one when i plug in zero i get two a sub two and for this last one, I get two a sub zero. So that's what this sum looks like. Once we combine it into one. All right, well, again, good news time. Um. Why did yeah. we need the two a sub two and the two a sub not? Those were the n equals zero mm -hmm. for this one. Yeah. And the n equals zero for that because I need to pull those out so that those two sums also start at one. Okay. I, I, I'm just taking the first term out. I'm taking, taking the zeroth term out. Okay. All right, well, now we've got our recursion relationship. So let me just clear a little space here for us. So here's what we've got. So first, we know that 2a naught plus 2a2 has to equal zero from this. So that means that a2 is going to equal negative a naught. So whatever a naught is, whatever we start with our initial value, our initial condition, then a2 is the negative of it. But then here's our other recursive relationship. It's, I'm gonna write it in this order, n plus two times n plus one times a sub n plus two plus n times n plus one times a sub n plus one plus two a sub n equals zero. So that was this guy right here. And again, these all have to equal zero because that's what our differential equation said it was equal to. If instead of it being homo uh, homogeneous, if it had been anything else, it would have led to different um, recursive relationship, but that's the one for this specific guy. Now, if I solve this for a sub n plus two, kind of like we did before. Um, I want you to notice something. We're going to get negative n over n plus 2 times a sub n plus 1 minus 2 over n plus 2 times n plus 1 a sub n. Uh, this recursive relationship, we actually need to know the two previous terms to get the next one. So like if we want say a sub five, I need to know a four and a three. And that's a little bit different than what we saw before. The one we saw before, you only need to know one of the previous terms, but in this case, we actually need to know multiples. But now that we've got that, we can start constructing our a's. So let's just do it. a zero and a one, we're gonna allow this to be whatever. A2, we now know that that's minus A0 from this right here. So now let's find A3. So for A3, we're going to use the recursive relationship. Let me just do this a little bit here real quick. So 
over here, we're going to plug in n equals 1. So a3 is going to be minus 1 third a sub 2 minus 2 sixths a sub 1. So I just plugged in n equal 1. And that brought me here. OK, so a3 is minus 1 third times a2. a2 is minus a0. So this is going to be 1 third a0 minus 1 third a1. So if you tell me a0 and a1, I now know a3. All right, well, let's find the next one here. So a4. Now we're going to plug in 2 for n. So we're going to get minus 2 fourths, so minus 1 half, a sub 3. And then when I plug in 2 down here, I get minus 2 twelfths, which is minus 1 sixth, a2. Okay, well, a3 was 1 third a0 minus 1 third a1. a2 was negative a0. So we'll add those together. So the a0 I get minus 1 sixth plus 1 sixth. Oh, cool, all the a0s went away. And then minus 1 half times minus 1 third is a plus 1 sixth. So we get 1 sixth a1. So let me just do one more, but I think you kind of see how this plays out. So now a5, plug in the three here. So we get minus three fifths a4. A4. Um, and then uh, plugging in the three here gives us minus two twentieths, which is minus one tenth a3. Okay, so that's going to be minus three fifths times one sixth a one, minus one tenth times one third a naught minus one third a one. Which, if I put that all together, I'm going to get minus one thirtieth a naught, and then I get one thirtieth minus three thirtieths. So that's minus two thirtieths. I think that's minus one fifteenth. A1. All right, but again, just we can keep going, right? Uh, you want A6, use a recursive relationship, you want A7, yeah, just do it, keep going, keep going, keep going, and you'll eventually get them all. All right, so now let's build our series again. So that we can see it with these A's. So this is what Y is looking like now. It's going to be A0 plus A1X minus 1. Right, we're centered at 1, so it's A1 times X minus 1. Okay, so then we would get A2. Well, we saw a2 was negative a0, so we're going to get minus a0 times x minus 1 squared. Then we're going to get a3. Well, a3 was 1 third a0 minus 1 third a1 times x minus 1 cubed. And then we're going to get a4, 1 6 a1 times x minus 1 to the fourth. And then we're going to get a5 minus 1 30th a0 minus 1 15th a1 times x minus 1 to the fifth plus dot dot dot. So 
So remember what we want to do though, is we want to split this into the pieces that have the A naughts and the A ones. So if we look at the ones that have A naught, we're going to get one minus X minus one squared. Now this next piece has both a naughts and a ones, but we're just gonna take the a naught part. So we're gonna get plus one third x minus one cubed. Uh, the a the fourth does not have an a naught, but the fifth does. So I get minus one thirtieth x minus one to the fifth plus dot dot dot. And then if we do the same thing with the a ones, we get uh, x minus one, no squares. Uh, the cubes we get minus one third x minus one cubed. The fourths we get one sixth x minus one to the fourth. The fifths we get minus one fifteenth x minus one to the fifth plus dot dot dot. And so there are our two functions that form the fundamental set. There's this one that I'm gonna circle in kind of the light purple. So we can think that's Y1. At least it's the first four terms of Y1. Right? And then the other one I'll circle here in green. And that's Y2. And I know this feels terribly anticlimactic. You're like, that's it? We're done, like that's not, there should be a next thing. Um, but no, there is no next thing, like there it is. The only next thing would be find more terms if you need more terms. And the way you would do that is come back to this recursive relationship and just keep going, find your A6, then your A7, then your A8 and so on down the line. It's crazy how again we're we're like you know it's another way to solve differential equations without actually doing like like calculus like with integrals and stuff like that. Yeah, it's just power I series. Mean, yeah, we we differentiated when we built our power series, right? Like that very first step, the one that I always tell you is like this is the first step you're gonna do. Yeah, that's the only that's the only calculus you did, and then the rest of it was algebra. So. Yeah, it feels like the calculus-based physics, you know, where like, you know, we, we use calculus to find the formula for something, and then we use that formula and don't really use the calculus part ever again. Like. Yeah, and, and that kind of is the power, <laughs> the power of the power series. Sorry about that. that unintentional dad joke. Um, but it, I mean, that literally is the power of power series, is that it turns it into polynomials and polynomials are freaking easy, man. They're so simple to use compared to other things. And we get to basically do an end around on the calculus. So um, it's one of those things, you know, I, I, I talk all, uh, all the time about calculus isn't hard. It's the algebra that's hard. Um, and, and really what it comes down to is if you're strong in algebra, it can make your life so much easier because it just turns into algebra problems, which uh, really are easier. Okay, so like I said, this is another way to kind of do this. So you don't have to just write out the first few terms of each thing and then try to add them and group like coefficients and because that's challenging, right? That's definitely challenging um, and can take a long time. And honestly, this is the thing that we can program a computer to do really easily. For those of you who've done any kind of computer programming, um, programming recursive anything is simple. Oh my God, it's simple. You basically just tell your computer, hey, see this formula right here? Do it. Do that formula. Start with this guy, right? And the computer will just keep doing it until you tell it to stop. Um, so this sort of thing is really useful for computational mathematics. All right, so questions on this guy? I know it um, added a bit of complexity because we were centered somewhere else, 
but it's really the same idea. All right, well, I wanna show you another technique that you can use to find these A's that can be even faster still. Um, it really kind of depends on what your differential equation looks like. But um, for this one, let me give you this guy. Let's say we've got this differential equation. So y double prime plus y prime plus, oops. Yeah, well, how about we'll go t's this time. t times y equals zero. All right, so t, x, same, same, but this time we'll do them as t. All right, now this is another one where I'm not gonna necessarily give you um, initial conditions, other than I'll just tell you that we're gonna go with y of zero equals a naught and y prime of zero equals a one. Okay, so um, me giving you the initial conditions though did suggest something to you. What does this say we should do? Start at zero. Yeah, let's center it at zero. So that means we're looking for, again, the one that's of the form zero to infinity a sub n times t to the n. Okay, so we know we want that one because we're centered at zero, but I'm not giving you specific values of a naught and a one. So that means that all of the other a's are going to still be in terms of a naught and a one. All right, now. Um, do you remember Taylor, the Taylor series formula, the Taylor uh, formula? I definitely remember the name. Okay, you remember the name, cool. It was the one that you used okay. to actually find the Taylor series for any function. I'm pretty sure there's division. There is division. And factorial. And there is a factorial, good. Yeah, on the bottom is n factorial. All right, I don't want that sum. Oh yeah, I do want that sum, sorry. All right. Anybody remember what goes on the top here? We definitely have an A, I guess. Uh, well, that's actually how we're building the A's. But it was the nth derivative of the center. Times x minus c to the n. So this is Taylor's formula. So hopefully that kind of brings back some memories from last year. But this right here is our a sub n. So um, what we know is that a sub n is actually going to equal the nth derivative at c divided by n factorial. And this is what we're going to use to actually help us figure out the different A's. So let me show you how this is gonna play out. So if we're gonna start getting our A values, we already knew that A0 is A0 and A1 is A1, which means the next thing we want is A2. Now, if we think about using this formula, this says that A2 is equal to the second derivative, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in zero because that's our center, divided by two factorial. So if I can just figure out what the second derivative is at zero, I can plug that in here and get my a2. Well, that's where this is gonna come into play. Let me rewrite this. 
y double prime is equal to negative y prime minus t times y. So that means at zero, this is going to equal the first minus the first derivative of zero minus zero times y of zero. Well, y prime of zero, we already know is a one. And y of zero was a naught. So that guy equals negative a one. So if we put that back in over here, it's negative a one over two. So there's a sub two. A sub two is negative one half a one. Okay, well that's great and all. But let's think about finding a3. We go a3. Okay, well, now that's going to need the triple derivative at zero divided by three factorial. And I know what you're thinking. Well, I, you guys are probably thinking lots of things. But one of the thoughts that comes up at this point is well, that's great and all, but my differential equation doesn't have a third derivative. Yeah, but we could just do it again. Yeah, yeah, it's like, no problem though, right? I don't have a third derivative, but I got a second derivative. So how about we just differentiate this thing? If we differentiate it, check out what happens. We get y triple prime equals, well, negative y double prime. And then from this, we have to use the product rule. Okay, so you're going to get minus y, and then minus ty prime. So let's plug in zeros. That's going to be minus y double prime of zero, minus y of zero minus zero times y prime of zero. And again, we can plug this stuff back in. OK, y double prime of zero. Remember we found that? That was right there. That's minus a1. So we get negative, negative a1 minus y of zero. Well, that's a naught. And then of course, zero times whatever is gone. So this ends up being a one minus a naught. So we go and we plug that in up here. a one minus a naught over six, because that's three factorial. And so there's a three. It's one sixth a one minus one sixth a naught. And you want more? Just keep going. So we'll do one more just for, as they say, shits and giggles. So let's find the fourth derivative by, again, differentiating with respect to t. So that's going to be minus y triple prime, minus y prime, minus another y prime, minus t y double prime. OK, well, y triple prime at 0 was a1 minus a0. I've got 2 y prime of 0, so that's minus 2 a1. And then we get 0 times y double prime. And this ends up being a0 minus 3a1. And so on and so forth. Do it as many times as you need to get what you want it to look like. 
But now let's just put this all together to see what our Y looks like. So it's A naught plus A1X minus one half A1X squared plus one sixth A1 minus one sixth A naught X cubed plus, oh, shoot, I forgot. I have to divide by four factorial. Don't forget your factorial. So that's going to be a naught over 24 minus 1 8 a 1 x to the fourth plus dot, dot, dot. And so again, our two functions are going to be, well, at least the start of them, 1 minus 1 6 a cubed or x cubed plus. 1 24th x to the fourth plus dot dot dot. And then the a1, we've got x minus 1 half x squared plus 1 6 x cubed minus 1 24th, or no, not 1 24th, 1 8th. x to the fourth plus dot dot dot. All right, so there's another trick, another way that you can actually find your uh, different A values in kind of a, uh, I think, faster way. Um, what's the cache? Like, is there a specific form for this? No. This no, can work but, for any? Yeah, but there is a catch. I mean, just think about this. Think about what potential issues, pitfalls, whatever you want to call them, what might manifest themselves here that could make this worse? Uh, the third, der the derivation. Yeah, th think about the derivatives. The derivatives were all pretty easy because of what our differential equation looked like, right? Come back and look at this thing this is gonna be easy to differentiate. It required product rule, but that product rule is barely product rule. But what if this was like, you know, inverse tangent of y prime, and then this was t over t squared minus four times y and, right? The derivatives could get really nasty really fast. The other issue is that, Every time you go to another one, you have to differentiate again. Which means you're gonna be differentiating all the time. Think about when we did it before with just the recursive, recursive relationship. How many times did we differentiate? Twice. I mean, it was really just at the beginning, right? It was, we just differentiated y to get y prime and then y double prime as sums, which was barely differentiation because it's just power rule. And that was it, right? This time you differentiate for every step along the way. So where we are at this point, we've already done, well, I think we've only done two derivatives, but we only know through A4. Before we did two derivatives and we had a formula that was going to get us all the A's. And another drawback of this form or of this method is that it, imagine trying to teach a computer to do this. That's a little bit more complicated than insert recursive relationship and go. All right, so um, it's a perfectly valid method totally works and you know to Bradley's point always I mean as, as long as this power series idea way right like if we're trying to do this at a singular point you're you're going to have troubles just like you would trying to do the other method at a singular point but barring that no this one is just as good as any other I I kind of like this one cuz it's 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 fast it's fun it's, you know 
it's less series stuff. And I imagine for most of you, the less we have to do a series, the better. For sure. I, I'm thinking it's like, it's a trade-off. It's like, it's either a bunch of algebra or a bunch of differentiating. Yep. And it just boils down to the person, I suppose. Yeah, I personally would prefer the differentiation bit for sure. So whenever I can use Taylor's, I probably would. <laughs> but see, you know, and I think Bradley, like that's a really good point about the, you know, you're trading off algebra for calculus. Because isn't that kind of like everything? It, there's that trade-off. Like think about back in the day when it's like, oh man, we got to integrate some things with trig functions. Oh, but what if I do some identities? I just took some of that integration work and I turned, you know, used trig algebra, let's say, to, you know, steal some of that integration work away. But it was at the cost of doing trig algebra. So um, I think that's a pretty, that, that's a recurring theme. That one was on purpose, by the way, recursive, recurring. Uh, that, it's definitely a recurring theme in calculus and in math is that you're going to do the work. You're going to have to do the work. It's just, you know, we, we, we play the, you know, what they call it, the shell game or rob Peter to pay Paul or all the other ways we talk about redistributing it. It's like, okay, well, we're just going to take that work, but take it from algebra world and move it to calculus world. Cause in this case, the calculus is faster or, vice versa right so it's just good to be able to know both ways and um to be able to do both and recognize when one is maybe easier than the other um but i will tell you that this one actually honestly is really easy to build the recursive relationship for if we had done it the other way in fact let me just show you really fast let me just get rid of all all of it, but we'll clear up some stuff here, space. Um, let me show you what happens when you use the, just the generic power series um, to plug it in. So let's just say we're going with this Y. So, uh, oh, and I just noticed I went back to X's even though I started with T's. Um, but so Y prime again is from one to infinity. And then y double prime is two to infinity. Ugh, it's going too fast. N times n minus one. This is n two to n minus two. All right, so I plug all that stuff in. So I get this guy. Uh, the next one is it's the y prime. So. And then we're going to get t times the y. So that t comes in really easily. And so now for these, um, I want to shift them so that these are all to the n plus ones. Yep. Or alternatively, I can shift them so that they're all to the n, which means shifting this guy as well. And that's what I would recommend in that case when you've got a, uh, when like your biggest power is bigger than n, I suggest that you shift it the other direction. So when we do that, let me just make these all n's now. This one's going to go from zero to infinity. And we'll have n plus two times n plus one times a sub n plus two times two to the n. This one I have to shift one. So it goes also from zero to infinity. n plus one a sub n t to the n. Now this one, I need to shift the other way. This needs to go down by one, which means my sum here has to go up by one. And I'm going to replace n minus one. Uh -oh, this was supposed to be an n plus one. Uh, 
And now, okay, I can combine them and go. So it'll lead to the same thing. It's just, uh, I imagine, like you guys were saying, this probably doesn't feel as good because you're not as comfortable with power series and doing that kind of stuff. My only issue with this, for the most part, is, well, one, getting lost in the algebra, but two, I don't, I don't know all the power series for every function, you know? Mm -hmm. We've been using, you know, linear functions attached to our y's. I don't remember what the power series of a sine of x is, you know? Right. Which, it, if you ran into one of those, yeah, you would have to find that power series. And then multiplying power series together is kind of a pain, you know, because it's, it's like infinite distribution. And yeah, that would be a lot more challenging than just differentiating. Like, uh, change this. Um, but instead of t, make that like e to the t times y. And this now, trying to do it the way I'm doing it here. Ugh, horrible. But go back and do it as the, we just keep differentiating every time. Oh, hell yeah, I'll, I'll differentiate e to the t times y all day long. I'll, I'll power rule the, or product rule the shit out of that. That's easy. So um, yeah, like there are definitely certain forms where you're gonna wanna do it one way versus the other. For sure, so. Um, but like I say, it's always good to know both ways, just in case. I honestly like feel bad for the mathematicians who derived all this. <laughs> Why do you feel bad for them? Because that's brutal. Brutal. Uh, yeah, but if you like doing it, I mean, and, and that's the thing, right? Like you're going to do the... If you end up being the math research person, you're going to do the math that you kind of like. So I guarantee you that whoever was doing this stuff with power series, like they dug it. It wasn't a chore for them. It was a, oh my God, check this out. We can use power series to do this. But um, I can definitely see how through your lens, the, especially the student lens, when you're still new to this stuff, you're just like, oh my God, you had to slog through this all the time. But, you know, that's what they did. It's their passion. If they didn't want to do this sort of stuff, they didn't. I'm sure they found other math to do or, you know, they applied it to the physical world or some such other thing. But, but I get what you're saying because it, it it's rough, no doubt about it. All right, um, I think I'm gonna stop here. I know we still have a little bit of time, but this is a good place to break. Um, plus, I know that Power Series gets old and it's Friday and it's you know snowing in Tahoe and whatever. So uh, insert favorite reason not to want to do anymore. Um, so what we'll do on Monday, on Monday is uh, we'll start talking about um, another kind of differential equation type. They're called Euler equations um, that of course come with their own patterns. Um, but Euler equations are one where um, we run into that issue of singular points that um, are, are a problem. So we're gonna talk more about singular points. We're gonna talk about you know what they do in terms of convergence, in terms of intervals of convergence, in terms of are there ways of getting around it, you know, all that sort of stuff. So um, now that we've seen how to treat ordinary points, just make up a generic power series and go, uh, we'll talk about singular points. Um, and then on uh, Monday, we should be done with our discussion of power series. Okay, so that's everything I've got for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording and wish you all a very happy weekend.